Hey guys, just now in December of 2023, I got my first ever official chess title of National Master for reaching a rating of 2200 in the United States. And in this video, I'm going to go over the last tournament that I played in. I'm going to do a recap of every game and show you how I got my rating past 2200, giving me this title. So this was a very small tournament, about eight people entered. Uh, but there were a lot of strong ones, strong people. And the time control was 90 minutes for the game with 30 seconds increments. And going into the first round, I was playing Dane, rated 2035. I was 2,189, so I only needed 11 points. And my record against him from previous encounters was uh, is 3-0. And last time, he played a Sicilian last, last tournament. And I managed to win that game. And but at this time he went he switched it up, he went for the French. And I and I did know that he sometimes plays the French. And specifically this variation with Bishop D seven. Because I've seen him play it in on on other boards and other tournaments. So here I was a, a little bit prepared because of course this was one of the possibilities for him to play. And here I decide to play bishop f4. It's not a very common move, but hopefully to get him out of his opening preparation. And after the knight moves, attacking my knight, I decided to drop back to c3 to maybe uh, uh, avoid trades to help me win the game, potentially. Or, or less likelihood of going into an endgame and getting a boring draw, so... I dropped back, so now he plays knight d5, attacking my bishop, and trying to trade knights still. I took, he took, I castled, and he played bishop e7 here. Now the computer says the much more comfortable would have been for him to play bishop d6, trying to trade the pieces, and after bishop e3, b6, c4, bishop e7, he would have been very comfortable. But he decides to play bishop e7, Played rook e1. Another option was c4. Maybe a little bit better, but I didn't really see a concrete follow-up, so I didn't really want to commit to it. He played castles, and here I played knight to e5 going into the center. He played b6 because I was actually threatening to trap his bishop with c4. Uh, c4, bishop c6, and, and win it and damage his pawn structure. So he played, he played b6, trying to drop back. And now I play this move rook e3 because I noticed that his king side here is lacking defenders. And what this means is that I I can try to use all my pieces over here to try to create a, some sort of attack and win the game very quickly. And now he took my knight, trading more pieces, more of my attackers. And now this was a key moment because I had the, the simple option of capturing the knight. Or I could also go for... An in-between move of bishop takes h7. So this, uh, if you want, this is an optional exercise. You can decide, would you play bishop takes h7? So pause the video if you'd like to try it. Okay, so bishop takes h7 would have been actually a mistake. Because after king takes, queen h5, king g8, rook h3, I am threatening checkmate and it is very, very difficult for him to stop. And I, I was very much considering playing this, but I noticed, of course, that he can actually uh, make room for his king to escape with f6. And after some checks, some attacks, his king gets to hide here, and after takes, takes, and bishop f6, I'm just down a bishop, and my attack is fizzled out. So this wouldn't have been good. So luckily I saw that move f6, and I didn't go for it, and I just decided to capture. Now I took with the pawn here because I thought that the pawn kind of closed the position on the king side as in it kept everything locked and stable and there's no more breaks in the center or uh, yeah breaks in the center and I can try to build up my own attack. Now here he played this move bishop to g5 and now is another key moment it's why to play what would you do? Uh, it's an optional exercise if you would like to pause the video. 
Now, before I go into that, what, what my opponent should have done was just g6, just to block off this bishop. And he didn't do this because it's kind of weakening the dark squares around the king, but the only problem is I can't really get to the dark squares very quickly. And after queen g4, he actually has to play this move h5, attacking my queen. And when I move back, after king g7, the dark squares are very hard to get to. The rook can always come over here, and black's perfectly safe. So g6 would have been the move to stop pretty much all of my attack. But he played bishop g5, continuing to try to trade. And if you saw it, I played this move. Bishop takes h7. Chuck, in between move. Now, the main, uh, the best move for him actually is to just move the king one square, not take the bishop. And I had to look at this. I actually looked at this. If you didn't, if you tried to find this uh, or calculate this, and you didn't look at this move, then uh, you kind of failed the exercise because there's a critical variation. Because here, both of my bishops are hanging. So after I take his, he recaptures, and now he's threatening checkmate, and also my bishop. But here, I saw that I could play rook g3, and after queen takes c5, winning my pawn back, I can play rook h3, lining up discoveries on his king, and after g6 to give him room, I can take, drop back, I want another pawn here, and his king is pretty open, so it's a little bit better. Not winning, I'm not crashing through, but it's a little bit better. So that's what he should have done to try to survive, but he decided to take, and now I have this move queen h5, check, threatening the king, threatening this bishop, winning back my piece. And after he plays bishop h6, which was his whole idea, it looks very solid. I can take the bishop. And after, uh, he didn't capture, but if you would, if you would capture, I could play rook h3, attacking this pawn. And actually, there's no good way for him to defend it. And checkmate will soon follow. Queen g5, I can just take it. Pawn spins, and checkmate will follow. And if rook h8, whoops, rook h8. I can still take and checkmate. So that's why he didn't take my bishop. So he played g6, attacking my queen. And now I have a couple of options. I can either go to g5 and uh, be up a pawn, basically, after the trade of queens, uh, which, or, or maybe I have some other attacks. But I decided to play the other move, queen h3, keeping more discoveries open on this king. And here, my opponent decided to play this crazy move, bishop takes g2, which surprised me, I didn't consider this at all. Um, because the point is, if I take with the queen, he can just take my bishop. But I can just take with the king, and he played check. But after I moved him the king back, there's no more attack. There's only a queen attacking, and it can't really do anything, and the king's still in trouble. So he played rook h8, lining up something on my queen. But here I calculated a fourth sequence of moves, and if you'd like to pause the vid video and try to work it out, you can do that. Okay, the move I played was bishop g5 check, and after king g8, I played this move, queen takes h8 check, and he resigned the game. Because after king takes, bishop f6, king g8, and rook h3, there's no way to stop a checkmate. So I won this game pretty quickly. I was very happy. I was very happy with this queen sacrifice. I got to uh, relax a little bit and um, go eat some pizza and then I was back a couple hours later for round two. So in round two I was playing black against Ahmed and Ahmed was a, a pretty small child but his rating is 2043 and I saw that he was actually beating some pretty high rated people and um, so I, I couldn't like uh, I couldn't like not pay attention I couldn't I had to take him seriously basically so he played e4 c5 not f3 e6 and uh, by the way I did play uh, this person um, last tournament and um, we actually drew that game but in this game we he surprised me by playing exactly the same variation he did last game. So I played knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, bishop b3, bishop b4. And here he took my knights, I played b takes, 
and play the same move that he did in our last game, queen d4, attacking my bishop, protecting, protecting the knight, protecting the pawn possibly. And last game I was a little bit confused because I was a little bit worried about playing c5 because it's a little bit weakening. But after analysis in our previous game, I did I did know that c5 was the best move and I played it here. Play queen c4 and I did look at this. I do remember looking at this, so d5, and after queen b3, uh, I know that I've played the best moves, I know I, sh I should be better here, but after d4, it looks like I'm winning a piece here, however, after castling queenside, I kind of regretted not uh, understanding more deeply why this was so good for black, because it's still very, very tricky, very, very, very tricky here. Because I can't really win any of these pieces because my my queen my queen will get taken, and there's also a lot of annoying checks and checks and maybe knight hopping in bishop here. There's a lot to think about, so it was very confusing. But uh, the move I ended up playing was the best one: bishop e6, attacking the queen, developing pieces, and making or connecting my rook. And here he played bishop b5 check. Now, the best move, that was slightly inaccurate. The best move and the one I was actually worried about during the game was bishop c4. And I was probably going to play queen e7 most likely, which would have been a little bit worse. But the best move here is actually, or to keep a pretty good advantage, is actually bishop takes c3. Not taking any of the pieces with a uh, with pawn, but with a bishop. And after... Um, after he takes this bishop, I can take this pawn here. That was that was the move that is very hard to look at. Taking this pawn with check because after king takes, I can castle, and now I'm still threatening the bishop, and I'm actually threatening to pin his queen and and win it. So he pretty much has to play king a1, and after takes takes king h8. I'm a little bit better because there's an attack on the king. And of course, I'm not actually up a piece, but the, the king is very weak. So that's why I'm better. So that was the best variation. And just to note here that rook b8 here doesn't actually work because after bishop f7, bishop c4 takes, takes. Even though I win a queen, uh, my king is very bad. I've lost an extra pawn here, and his pawns are very safe. His king is pretty safe, and it's actually just equal here. So this wouldn't have given me an advantage. And also just to go over, if he, he doesn't accept this sacrifice, king b1, plays king b1, then I can just take the bishop, and after queen e7, if, if, he checks, if he checks me forking me, I can step with a king, defending my rook, and after takes, 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 I'm just up a knight. Okay, so that's what I should have done, and I'll remember this for next time, <laughs> but he's probably not going to play it play this same variation anymore. So what he did, it was bishop b5 check, and I managed to find the correct move here, knight d7. Uh, now I'm blocking his rook, blocking the check, and the pieces are still forked. So he played knight d5, and of course, yeah, of course his queen was hanging too, so he played knight d5 in between move and saving his piece. And here I played this move, d takes e3, finally capturing that extra piece. But that wasn't actually the best. It was still good, but not the best. Best was to just play castles. And after a simple variation like, uh, well, first of all, if he just moves the bishop, I have knight b6. And this knight is actually pinned, and there's no way out. And after, let's say, a3, I can move my bishop. And after uh, some move like this, queen a4 lining up on my knight, I can take that, take. And I can take this pawn over here, attacking the rook. And if he moves, then I can I get to take uh, his bishop. Because if I take now, of course, I lose this bishop here. But after takes, I, I can take the bishop. He takes my bishop. And then e2, attacking the rook and promoting, would have won the game. So that's that was a little bit better move castling. Because everything just worked out. But I took, and here he played bishop takes d7. Not the best, best move, but not so bad either. I took with a queen, um, and he took 
with the pawn with the queen. Now he's threatening discoveries like check and winning my queen. So I have to be very careful. Also, if I castle, like I, I can't really castle right now, still because of check winning my queen. So what can I do? I got to move my queen out of this line of fire, but what can, where can I go? Well, I don't want to go on the line of fire. The knight's defending these two squares, so I can't go there. Uh, let's see, if I go to b5, that would uh, just allow a family fork, so that's not good. Uh, if I go anywhere else, then <laughs> there would be a fork here, so that's not good. If I play queen, queen c6 or c8, then I still can't castle because knight e7 would fork my king and queen. So the only the only move here is just queen b7, and it's the only square that doesn't really uh, have any downside. So I did manage to find this. Okay, so he played a3, um, and here I didn't I didn't have to move my bishop because I could actually castle, and now now my bishop's unpinned, and I can threaten this knight. And here he scared me a little bit. He played queen b3, which just pins this bishop, well, defends his knight, and pins my bishop to the queen. So I was a little bit scared, but um, I, ha I have some resources. Now, the easiest way, which <laughs> I kind of slipped my mind, was to just attack his knight, because now, well, if he takes, I just take it. And if he plays c4 defending it and keeping the pin, I have this move, bishop d2 check, checking the king, and trying to take this queen that's now hanging, because this c-pawn moved. And after the king defends the queen, bishop f5, and he'll have to give up the queen. So that's what I could have done. But I chose to play instead c4, attacking his queen. <clears throat> and now it cannot keep a pin on my bishop. And also if he takes my bishop, I can actually just take his knight, also defending my queen, and I'm up a bishop. So he ended up taking on c4, the pawn. And here I decided to just drop my bishop back. And now I'm just pretty much up a bishop for two pawns. So I was pretty happy. He played queen e4, threatening knight f6 check, winning my queen. So I, I obviously didn't fall for that. I played rook b8, defending my queen and lining up on the pawn. He took my bishop. I took back. Now I'm not lined up anymore. He played f4, kind of threatening f5, but not really, because I can always just play queen g5 check and win the pawn. So there's no real threat, but I decided to play queen f6 anyway, attacking this pawn. And if b3 or moves like that, I can probably sack, but um, if c3, what I was going to do, there's a lot of winning moves here, but what I was going to do is a fancy rook takes b2, uh, not check, but a sacrifice, sacrificing the rook. <laughs> uh, and after king takes rook b8, I'm breaking my other rook in, all my pieces are lined up. The king has three places to go. If he goes to a1, or whoops, a1, there's queen c3 checkmate. If he goes to c2, there's bishop f5 winning the queen. And if he goes to c1, there is queen takes c3 check, queen c2. And after queen a3, I can play rook b2 just winning the queen and very easily winning. So that's what I was going to do with c3. C3, I sack my rook. Very easy win. So he ended up blocking this, this threat with his own rook. And here I decided to bring my other rook into the game, lining up, threatening bishop f5. He played c3 now. And here I had many options. Uh, I just had to find some threats. But I decided to I decided to just play g6 because I didn't like the, the thought of uh, the back rank being a problem. And also my bishop... If it go, ever goes to f5, it's protected. So if bishop f5, queen e5, I can move along this line and my bishop's protected. He played h3, preparing g4 and attacking attacking me. I attacked this queen. He dropped back and looking for attacking moves, I found queen b6 lining up on this weak pawn. And here he played queen 2 f2. Now, the best move for him was actually b4 defending the pawn but what I was going to do is I was I was going to play queen c6 attacking this pawn attacking this pawn there's no way to save both and after queen d2 take 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 and lining up my rooks I'm just winning 
but he played queen f2. And what I was also worried about is actually queen d2 because after, well, let's, let's show it after queen f2, I played rook takes c3, sacrificing my rook. And here he actually resigned the game because after takes, I can just check him and very simply win the rook if I would like. Now, it's a little bit tricky because after rook b2 and king e3, this isn't actually very clear because I don't have any checks. I don't have any checks if, if, if I take his queen, he takes mine. And um, it's not very clear here. Now, luckily, there's still queen a2 winning, but it's still not very clear. But the best continuation would have been to play queen c2 check, forcing here, king e3, rook e1. And here, I did sack my rook, but luckily I have this one move, queen takes c3, and his king is trapped. And he has to give up everything and is checkmate soon. So that's what could have happened. Now, if you would have played queen d2, I would have played queen b3 going for queen uh, a2 and b1, or rook takes c3 if his queen leaves. So that would have crashed through anyway. So I did manage to win this game, so I was very happy. Now moving on to the third game. I was playing someone named Edward. His rating was 1990. Now my record against him going in was um, about, I think it was 3-0 again. So I wasn't too worried. And uh, I decided to play my usual stuff, Sicilian. Got into a knight or if I played this this move f4 just to make it a little bit off books, like just just to get out of theory a little bit. Played e5, I played knight b3. Not like the top top moves, just to make sure they're we're not getting to very theoretical territory. We're getting into some new and interesting positions. He played bishop e7, very good move. I took here on e5. It's still technically my opening prep. We trade queens. I play bishop e3, developing my bishop, repairing castling, I play knight bd7, I castle, castle, and I play h3, stopping possibilities of knight g4, also preparing g4, b5, g4, and uh, here uh, it's very hard for him, he can't really win this pawn on e4 with b4, well b4 is what he played, I play knight a4, but here he can't really win this pawn on e4 because after bishop g2 this knight doesn't have anywhere to move because I'll take his rook and after knight f6 I just have g5 attacking the defender and I'm gonna win a piece so he plays h6 instead stopping any g5 ideas and now I decide to develop my bishop I probably should have played bishop g2 but I decided to play bishop c4 once again if uh, if he takes this, I have bishop d5 working. So he plays bishop b7, and now he's attacking the pawn twice. And it's not really defended. But I did look at this. I played knight ac5, attacking his bishop and his knight, and defending my pawn. He took. I played bishop takes, attacking the rook. And he... He moved the rook out of the way, and here I played rook h2 e1. And I thought, it looks like he can still take the pawn. And uh, I thought that after bishop takes e4, I, I thought that I could maybe take and then fork him. But actually this doesn't work because he can take my bishop. And if I just take back, I'm, I'm down in exchange, so I have to take his rook. And now after knight takes b3, a takes b3. It looks like we're even material, rook, rook, bishop, bishop, but he has bishop g5 check, and then he wins a piece. So that wouldn't have worked. So uh, yeah, I think I, I think I was starting to get worried about bishop takes c4 because I didn't really see exactly how to deal with it. But he played knight takes e4, which was actually a mistake because the knights stopped defending the square d7, and now I play rook d7, attacking the bishop and attacking the f7 square, forking his king and rook. So now I'm, now I should be a little bit better. And he was visibly unhappy, and I was very happy. And and also just to just to note, uh, because I won my previous two games, if I won this game, I would have uh, pretty much guaranteed my 
uh, rating to be over 2200 so I would have uh, I would have been very happy so all I had to do was win this game so I was feeling very good uh, but he, he played bishop g5 check king b1 here he took my bishop just to get out of the out of harm's way and after I took back his pieces are still hanging and he played another in-between move attacking my rook but I just moved out of the way and now the bishop and pawn are still attacked also if he if he tries to play bishop g2 I looked at this I can take on f7 with the rook and with the rooks getting in king being lined up here it's very very bad so he played bishop c6 attacking my rook I took with check um, he moved I took the free rook now if he takes my rook um, I can take back with the bishop and I basically want a piece because he can't he can't take that bishop I kind of get out of get out of his way so he took my bishop and right now I'm up in exchange so it should be very good I played rook d6 attacking his bishop bishop g2 forking my rook and pawn but I wasn't too worried because after rook g1 I noticed that if he took on h3 this bishop is actually trapped this bishop has nowhere to go and the bishops are also lined up for me to fork but this is not very simple yet uh, because um let's see here yeah after rook h1 I think he has moves like rook f8 to go on the back rank so it's not so easy and also he has moves like bishop f2 counter-attacking my knight possibly so what I would have done or what I was planning on doing um, was actually to try to attack this bishop to win it this way while it's trapped however this doesn't work because after bishop f2 attacking my rook I can't really counter-attack this bishop and after I move say to h1 he can just keep taking so rook d3 doesn't quite work but I, what I would have done was I was gonna play knight e4 stopping bishop f2 and uh, then rook d3 and I thought I was just gonna be winning the bishop but he has an actual um, pretty good move here rook f8 lining up on this back rank and after let's say some like rook d2 he can well first of all play bishop f1 he can play rook f1 in trade but he can also just take this pawn and I can't take back because of checkmate so that wouldn't have worked so the best move here actually would have been to play rook d2 threatening to go this way and stopping bishop f2 now here's a sample line from the computer rook f8 giving this bishop more squares and after knight d3 e4 rook h2 takes 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 rook f2 and here if he plays bishop f6 i have this move uh, if he plays bishop f6 by the way attacking the pawn I have this move g5 and after takes king c4 and the bishop moves and I take he cannot take this pawn back because of checkmate so I'll be just up this uh, I'll just have this pawn it would be very dangerous for him so this this should be winning so that was the that was the way that I could have been winning if he would have taken on h3 but he decided that it, everything was just too dangerous so he just played bishop f3 keeping it safe now uh, I was feeling good because I won the exchange but the only problem was that I couldn't exactly see how to stop this pawn here this pawn is advancing is advancing so fast and there's no way to block it because these bishops I can't really block the pawn anywhere with the rook because these bishops will literally just attack any of these squares and even the knight is very hard to block because uh, I mean even if I block it here what am I doing I'm very passive he can just come some other way so I, the more I was looking the more I was getting worried because it was very very difficult to find a way to s just completely stop this pawn um, so what I decided to go for was to try to trade pieces so I decided to fork his rook and and the pawn so now he has to trade rooks and I thought I was a little bit I had a better chance here because of less pieces but still it's very very difficult to block this pawn he played king g8 going for possibly king f7 and here I saw that I could have 
this attacking move that I can play rook f1, attacking the bishop and even going towards f8. I played bishop g2, I played rook f8, and I thought I saw something here. He played king h7, the only move. I thought I saw that I could play rook b8 here, attacking this pawn. And if he defends it, well, first of all, by the way, if he takes this pawn and I take, this pawn's defended, and now I can try to run my c pawn up the board. But when he defends it, which is what he did with bishop e7, my plan was to just play rook b7, attack the bishop, and the bishop couldn't support this pawn as well as this pawn over here. For example, if, if he tries to keep this pawn protected, he would drop this one, and I'll be very happy. However, I realized a little bit too late that if I, if I, if I play rook b7, you can just take it. <laughs> so I was very unhappy after this. So I didn't have that plan available. So I ended up playing rook e8 attacking the bishop. And what I could have done also here, by the way, was actually this move knight f8, which I did look at. And if he plays king g8, I could play a check attacking his bishop king f7 and I could trade the bishops and play h4 for example and this this should have been much easier to win so what uh what what he was going to do is he's going to take the the knights I'll take back and after taking this pawn I can go after the dangerous e pawn and after takes takes g5 this was the problem I saw a position like this and I and I really wasn't sure Am I able to stop these two pawns from promoting or not? It was very, very difficult to assess this position, but it turns out that yes, I can. The computer says I can because after king c1, uh, he can't start pushing because he drops this pawn. So he plays king g6, uh, king d2, h5, king e3. And yes, I am very, very quick here to stop all these pawns. So I should have done that. That would have been a very clean win with knight of eight, knight of eight chuck. But I ended up playing rook e8, which is still actually pretty good. He played bishop d6, rook d8. He went back. I did repeat here because I, I, w I just wasn't very happy after missing a small little combination or a small little square. I was uh, very displeased, but I kept going. The pawn's under attack. I finally decided to try to play h4. And here he played king g6 activating the king, I played rook d8, he played bishop e7, and now I'm still better here, but the way I played it, I kind of wasted a bunch of moves here instead of being very active and trading pieces, and unfortunately, my winning moves are starting to become smaller and smaller, and here I only had one winning move, and it was actually, if you think about it, it's pretty obvious, it's, it's uh, not rook d3, that's what I did, and the problem with this move, actually, what I did in the game is that it doesn't actually threaten anything. It doesn't really do anything. I thought I was stopping bishop h3, going after this pawn, so saving this pawn, kind of, but it really doesn't do anything, and he can just take this pawn. So I shouldn't have done that. So my first actual, my first move that I stopped attacking and I stopped doing anything, that's when I blundered the, all the advantage away. So what I should have done was actually just rook d7, attacking the bishop. And after bishop takes h4, I could play this move rook takes g7, and I was looking at this variation, but I kind of thought that after king f6, my pieces are forked, and uh, I'm probably just going to lose, but I should have looked a little bit further, because there is an attacking move here of rook h7 attacking this pawn, and if he takes my knight, I can take, I can take this pawn attacking his king and bishop, and he does have bishop f f6 but I have g5 getting the piece back and it's a very easily winning endgame okay and if he plays bishop g5 I can just uh, I can just take it and then after king c1 I should be doing very well stopping this pawn and then marching my c pawn very soon and after let's say something like uh, king g6 defending the pawn and attacking my rook I have this move knight to f8 check attacking the king and defending my rook and after king g5, rook g7, king f4, knight g6, king g3. If he takes this pawn, then I take, take, and take. So king g3, knight takes, takes, 
in rook g6, I am eliminating this pawn, and it should be a, a very easy win from here. So I should have looked further and further at more and more attacking moves, but I stopped here, and I didn't see this continuation, which would have been a pretty nice, nice win. So I played rook d3 instead. He took my pawn, and now it's getting harder and harder to stop stop his army because my pieces aren't coordinated and there's nothing to attack. I played king c1, getting my king in. He played bishop back. I played c4. Now, this one I started to like uh, realize that my only real plan was to try to push some pawns up the board and try to make a queen. And I couldn't. There's no way I could just allow black to do whatever he wanted. I needed to do something myself. I took with the b-pawn to make a passed pawn, king f6 attacking my knight, knight c7 attacking this pawn, king g5, I played rook g3 attacking his bishop defending the pawn, but it's not a very ideal move, it's very passive here, but at least I'm holding on to the pawn, he played bishop b7 defending, I played c4 advancing my own passed pawn, king h4, and I played rook b3 attacking move, Usually attacking moves are the way to go. Uh, like they're usually the best moves. Like you gain time and you get more options and you limit your opponent's options. So you play bishop c8. I played rook b8. Another attacking move he took. I finally took that pawn. And now he started advancing with e4 and was getting very very shaky. It was very hard to evaluate this position. Played rook e8 attacking again. Bishop g5, king c2. And e3, and this pawn's very dangerous. I couldn't really see anything, uh, anything to do besides, uh, I mean, pushing. Uh, what I did was I pushed this pawn, but computer says that I should have just brought the knight back to defend against this pass pawn. That would have been possibly my last chance to um, actually have a winning or, or like a saving this game. So I played c5 instead. I played bishop d7. And here I play this move, rook e4, which is what actually blundered, kind of blundered the game away. Uh, the best move would have been rook e5, and it's, it's very, very difficult to explain why, because it doesn't look like it does anything. But apparently rook e5 would have felled, and it's very difficult to understand. I played rook e4, though, and now black uh, is starting to get the upper hand. Also, he's threatening bishop f5, pinning my rook. So I, I played king d1. He played king f3, supporting the pawn and attacking my rook. Played rook d4, attacking his bishop. These are some of my only attacking moves, so might as well play them. He played e2 check. I blocked the pawn with my king. That's the only place I could go to stop it from queening. And luckily, there's no bishop h4. I think I think he actually thought that here he had bishop h4, but my rook does guard the square. So he played bishop e3, attacking my rook and preparing bishop f2 check and e1 queen. But I have this move, rook d3, pinning his bishop, not allowing it to go there. And here he played bishop b5, and uh, I was pretty pretty hopeless here. I thought I would lose the game. I thought I would mess, I would mess this up, and I was pretty sad. Because he's just forking my, my rook and knights, and it's almost impossible to, to do anything here. But I still have this chance here with, uh, or by the way, if I play like rook a3, and he takes. I can't really take that because the bishop now attacks my king and he gets to make a queen. So I couldn't do that. So my only, my only, my only move is to actually bring the knight back, defending my rook. And the crazy thing is, after he takes and I take, my knight is also defending the f2 square. This is pretty funny. Now here, black is still winning, but he played this blunder of g5. So what was the winning move here? Now the winning move was actually this move. Uh, well, first of all, actually, let's let's go over what I did before we before I show the winning move. Or you can try to find it. You can try blacks win. Uh, try to find blacks winning move here if you'd like as a um, optional exercise. But after g5, let's see what I should have done. So I played c6, which was another blunder because it gives the game away, and. Um, he played or, or how he should have uh, won this game so how should he have won this game he played this move bishop b6 which was actually a blunder now okay now let, let's go over why all these are moves are blunders 
First of all, right now I can play this move knight to e5 check. And by the way, he's also he's threatening bishop a5 check and dislodging my king also. Or something like this in bishop a5. But I have this move knight to e5 check. And the only problem is that he cannot defend this pawn. He cannot keep defend, defending this pawn because if he plays king e3, there's knight c4 forking. So he has to attack my knight. But then I have knight d7 attacking the bishop and still attacking this pawn. And now he cannot guard both of them. And I basically win this dangerous pawn and I save the game. So that's what happened in the game. So how could he have prevented this this move? And and also now going back, this move g5 was a blunder because I should have started with a knight e5 check. And now after king e4, there's knight d7. And again, he cannot guard this pawn. I'll just take a next move because if he plays king d3, I just check him again and he cannot guard this pawn. And after knight d5, king e2, bishop c5 and king f3, I am in time to stop all these pawns and draw the game. So I should have played knight e5 here, but I played c6. And now this move allows, again, the winning move for black, which is bishop to d4 first, stopping knight e5 and threatening checkmate. And what this does is this forces my king to move from the blockade. And now he gets to stop my pawn. And now after knight e5 check, my king's not blocking, so he can step forward and try to make a queen. Now there's a few more checks here, but he can just step away, attack my knight, attack the knight again, and after this, king f1, and knight d3. There's just no way for me to stop this h-pawn. Even though I stopped this pawn, there's no way for me to stop everything, and he stops my counterplay. So that's what he should have done. So he should have played an in-between, kind of an in-between move, just bishop to d4, stopping knight e5 check, threatening checkmate, and making my king give up the blockade, and now his king can keep defending the pawn. And that's exactly what he should have done last move as well, bishop d4, king d2, and then after h5, c6, and bishop b6, this pawn is just running. So that's what he should have done. Now back to the game, we both missed this a lot. But in the end, I had this beautiful knight maneuver. Uh, what was it? It was this knight maneuver defending the square and then knight b6 uh, going to d7 and also possibly to c4 attacking. Like this geometry is very, 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 very beautiful. And I'm very lucky to have saved this game. And after a series of checks, it was, it was a very easy draw. I just had to attack these pawns and blockade them and win them. So I decided by attacking this uh, to go by attacking that pawn forcing it to move forcing it to move again and then i just brought my king in and all i needed to do really was to just sack my knight for this pawn and then get my king to the corner because we all know this bishop is the wrong color so if the if the bishop cannot attack the queen square there's no way to get my king out of there and it will be an easy draw he played h3 i just sacked so of course if he takes which well he did King g3 and he can't really defend the pawn but even if he could I could just get my king here and there's no way to get it out and it'll be a draw and we ended up with a king versus king draw and yes this game was the final game of the Saturday which was when I played all these three games and just like my last tournament it ended up at about 11 45 p.m. and I had to go home and uh, basically go right to sleep and right when I woke up in the morning I would have to go back to the playing hall and play my next round so it's kind of tight it was very hard to um, get some rest and more importantly prep for the next game which was the most difficult yet so my next game the next day um, I was playing this person uh, Okechuku and his rating was 22-34, he was the uh, the top player in this tournament, and I had the black pieces. But instead of sleeping in uh, in the morning, I decided to do a little bit, like an hour or so of prep uh, for him, because I kind of knew what he would play. I, I kind of knew that he would play d4, knight of 3, and he did this last tournament, like, uh, 
another time we played, I, or at least I, I've also seen him play this move c3, and then his goal is to go with bishop g5 and then start attacking, start attacking. So that was very dangerous. I didn't want to allow any sort of attack. So I decided to prepare something. So what I did was I played e6, and after g, bishop g5, I noticed the stockfish likes to uh, just attack the bishop, and after bishop h4, if he goes back, that makes bishop g5 kind of pointless, and I would get a free move, so I'd be happy. But after bishop h4, I saw the stockfish like g5, bishop g3, and knight e4, and now black is a little bit, a little bit better because because I can I get to take this bishop. So the best line, which is what I, lo I was looking at um, in my one hour of prep in the morning, was after knight f d2, I can take the bishop, just develop. And I should have a bishop pair, and I should be fine. Should be slightly preferred. And I also noticed that uh, there is an obvious move here for white, which is knight bd2, which is actually what he played in the game. And I saw that it was actually a big blunder, because I can just play h5. And now this bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. I'm pretty much trapping it. If he, if he takes my knight, I attack his knight. And after he moves, I still trap the bishop. This bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. So I'm just pretty much winning a piece. So I was very happy. So I didn't really analyze this. I saw that after knight bt2 h5, I should be um, winning. So I didn't really go further. But I wish I would have gone a little bit further because this is actually not that simple, as we'll see. So he played queen c2, which is actually the best move. Also, by the way, if he played h3, I could take, take and uh, probably play something like this, forcing his king to defend. And this would be kind of a bad, uh, a bad, uh, really bad position for him. And I didn't, I did look at this and what to do uh, a little bit in, in my prep. So I was pretty happy, but he played queen c2, which is actually the best move. And I played h4, he took my knight, I took back the knight. Now he played bishop e5, attacking my rook. The only real move here is f6, trapping the bishop. And now queen takes e4. So uh, now this is another key moment in in the game. If you, you'd you like, uh, you can treat this as an exercise. What would you do here as black? Okay, so now there's a couple options. If I simply take this bishop, it would be a very, very bad move because after queen g6 check, Say king e7, queen takes g5, king e8. White is actually the one who's better in in this entire position. So we get something like this. White wins a bunch of pawns. My king is very bad, and my whole position is a mess. So even though I win the piece, this is not a very good position for me. So taking the the bishop allowing queen g6 is not good. So how do I defend against against queen g6? Now there's a couple of options. I could uh, move my rook to defend, and rook g8 would have been an option, but that wouldn't have been the best move because after king eight, uh, queen h7, rook g7, queen h5, king e7, white can take, take, and after e4, my pieces are just too awkward right now, and black and white is uh, not even that much worse, or maybe not worse at all. So that's not the, the right move. The right move is actually rook to h6, which is what I actually ended up finding in the game. I was pretty happy for finding the only correct move, rook h6, defending against the check and the bishop still trapped. He played e3, I took the bishop. And here I played knight d7, which was actually good, but I realized that I missed that uh, white was actually threatening knight g4 kicking my rook off of g6, so that would have been very, very bad. I kind of missed entirely that this was a threat. But luckily, after knight d7, if knight g4, I do have knight f6 forking the knight and the queen, and after takes takes, I'm just up a piece. So I was very happy. So this is the point where I was like, okay, I'm not missing any more threats. I'm literally, I, I gotta look for all the threats. Like, it kind of woke me up a little bit. So he castled, and here I played bishop g7. And the problem here I had was that it was very, very difficult to see how to develop my pieces and 
get my king to safety or like get my pieces active even though i have an extra piece it's very hard to see where to put where to place them and um so the best thing i could have done which was after this move i did see the correct plan but this was kind of a little bit of a wasted move because the correct plan was to play these moves queenie uh whoops queenie seven and then c6 stopping d5 and any bishop checks so c6 and then take the knight, develop or, or move the knight out of the way, even develop the bishop and castle queen side, and I should be up a piece. So that was the plan. The plan is to play queen e7, c6, get the knight out of the way, get the bishop out, and castle. So that was the way to get my pieces out. But I played bishop g7 first, which was a slight uh, delay in the plan. He played bishop c4. No real threat here. I'm still defended. But I did manage to find their correct plan of c6 and queen e7. Um, so I was very happy afterwards. So what I did here, I decided to trade knights because I calculated that after d takes, I could play my plan of bishop d7, queen e7, and castles. And I, even though it looks scary on the d file, there's no way for him to actually... Uh, I, I calculated there's, there's no way for him to actually get through and, and there's no actual tactics, basically. Um, now, what it turns out, my opponent played g3, but it turns out my opponent did have, uh, according to computer, my opponent did miss a win here. And um, so what my opponent missed, my 2200 opponent missed, that was that he can play this crazy move, sacrificing the, oh, the rook. With rook takes d7, and after queen takes, he could take this pawn and after rook h8 so he could play rook d1 and after queen e7 he could play rook d6 attacking this pawn here and pinning my uh, queen and king and after queen takes g5 takes king d8 queen d4 check i can play king c8 and now he missed here that he has this only move that actually still gives him a a, a, a positive advantage for white is bishop a6 and after I play king c7, he takes. And after rook d8, rook a d8, he, he can take this pawn. And after I play this move, rook d1 check, king takes d1, queen g4, and to capture his rook, he can play bishop a6 check, king d8, take my bishop. And after I, I attack his queen, take his pawn, he has this move, queen takes h4, and it's a plus one advantage for white. So he missed this 15 move only move combination my 2200 raider opponent missed all those 15 moves and he ended up playing uh playing g3 instead so i was lucky that my opponent missed those 15 moves very very lucky okay so i played queen e7 continuing with my plan play g takes h4 which looks like he's opening up uh, the position for his rooks but i saw that i don't have to take this pawn i can take the other pawn and now these pawns are weak so here my opponent was very very unhappy visibly and i was actually uh pretty happy with myself because i was going to castle but it's still not the end of the story so he, he took back i castled played rook d6 and here i started actually seeing ghosts because i played this move queen to e8 which was a small mistake uh my plan was to play bishop f8 to e7 defending this rook when he when he doubles i defend my rook i move my king out of the way and i go here and then we do a bunch of trades so that was my entire idea but i was a bit scared of something and after looking at this i didn't play rook h4 because i was scared of something um which is very very hard to this uh, to show right now because i have no idea what exactly i saw i think i was hallucinating a little bit uh, but for example, after rook queen d4 attacking this pawn, I actually have this move bishop h6, and after he takes, I have rook takes f4 only move. Now the king and uh, bishop are lined up. So if he plays king b1, then I just I can just take this bishop here, and there's nothing going on over here because after some checks, I just move, and there's nothing happening. So I kind of miss this. I'm I'm not sure why there is nothing really scary i just take and take all his pawns i was afraid of some moves like f5 f6 but 
they're never really an option, especially after bishop h6. And for example, if he plays queen d3, he can play rook takes f4 here, and after I uh, after he lines up a cannon threatening moves like bishop e6, I just play bishop takes e5, and now this rook's under attack, and I can just take it, and there's nothing going on here. So I was kind of scared of something, and this would have been a very easy way to just get all my pieces organized. But I played queen e8, which is still kind of okay, kind of okay, but it's not the best. So here, my opponent played queen d4 attacking this pawn, and I played b6. However, there was there the computer does suggest one other move. C5, attacking the attacking the queen, giving up a pawn to make room for this bishop to develop. So a sample variation goes queen takes c5 check. And actually not 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 bishop c6, but king b8 here, and after rook hd1, bishop f8 f5, rook c8, um, I can take the rook and then play rook c7, and I'm perfectly safe here. So that's what I could have done after this sample variation. But I didn't see that at all. I played b6, my opponent started attacking with a4, I played king c7, getting ready, uh, defending my pawn against this uh, assault. Rook a d1, I continue with my plan of getting my bishop here to defend the rook. Bishop a6, I got, and, and by the way, I can't take this rook because of checkmate in one move, so that's out of the question right now. That's why I played bishop a6, bishop e7. Now, a5 doesn't actually threaten anything, so I didn't need to do anything at all. I played bishop c8, which is actually a mistake, and it allows a draw. And what I should have done was just taken here because there's still no threat for white. I can just sit still for a little bit, and after, for example, b4, bishop g5, and this, I'm just crashing through, and there's no nothing that white is threatening. Everything's defended. So that's what I should have done. But after bishop c8, I thought I was trading everything. I thought I was trading, but it turns out that after takes, he played rook takes d8, which was not a good move, not the best move. What he should have done was bishop takes c8, and it's actually what I was scared of during the game, what I was expecting. And what I was going to do is I was I was planning on taking this rook first, and after e takes, I could just take the bishop with a king. There's no d7, but I, I maybe I noticed in the game, maybe not, but he has this move queen g7, which threatens checkmate in one, and also threatens my rook. So I'm going to lose my rook, and I am losing the game here. So I can't really take this rook, so I have to settle for king takes. And after after he takes the pawn, the queen just gets in, and it's a perpetual. And it's a draw. And that would have not been good for me. And by the way, I had to win this game to get my, uh, my rating goals. So a draw would have been actually kind of bad. So that's what, I, that's what he should have done. But he played rook takes d8. And I played queen takes because if bishop takes, there's checkmates. So queen takes, played queen a4, opening up the rook discovery on my queen. And also trying to take here and come in with a queen. But I saw that I could play bishop d7. I calculated all this uh, pretty long ago or like a couple moves ago. He played bishop e2, opening up the queen to give this uh, perpetual. I played queen b8, stopping that. He played h5, which was the point of bishop e2, to defend this pawn that I should have taken so many times, so many moves ago. And now it's a, it's just a protected pass pawn, kind of, by the bishop. I play bishop c5, activating my bishop, maybe going for checks. He played rook d3, stopping any checks. I played b5, an attacking move on the queen. He has to move somewhere. He played queen d1. Here I played rook to h7, possibly going for, um, actually no, it was the queen on d1 attacks the bishop, so rook h7 defends against the threat, but eventually also rook f7 is an idea. And here he played this move um, queen to h1, because there's, <laughs> there's very little uh, space for the queen to move to, and uh, this was the moment that when he, he when he was making this move, queen to h1, he had the piece in hand and just 
put it here and left it on a the the weirdest looking square blocked by a pawn and on a, this diagonal. When you play queen h1, it was actually kind of very hard for me to not not laugh out loud or like audibly make a like start laughing. I was trying to keep myself from laughing because it was like this is the kind of move that you make when you know it's not going well. And he was also very uh, like visibly uncomfortable or like shaking his head. It was not happy with his position. So it was a little bit funny. Anyway, I played queen a7, lining up the bishop to give a check and win a pawn, and also possibly give checks here. Of course, this is actually a bigger threat right now. So he played king b1. I played queen a4 attacking this pawn directly. Queen f3 defends it, and I played rook f7, which attacks the pawn, and it looks like he can't defend it. Um, but this does allow for pretty much a very good uh, defense by him. If he would have found this move h6, advancing his passed pawn, and after I, after I win the pawn, what he can do, and I actually saw this during the game, and I was a little bit worried, he can play this move rook to h3, stopping me from going behind the passed pawn and supporting it. And I have to play rook f8 and block the pawn with my rook. And after bishop d3, even though I'm up a piece, it's very, very hard to get my pieces organized, and this should be very close to a draw, or computer says very, very drawish. So this would have been his best chance. So that's why rook f7 is not good. But he played b4, stopping my threat and attacking the bishop. I played this check, which is what he left behind when he moved the pawn. I moved the bishop back, rerouting it to attack the pawn this way. Bishop d1, I checked, I attacked the pawn, he defended it with the rook. And now I played uh, also a pretty funny maneuver. Remember how he put his queen in the corner? I put my own queen in the corner now, going for queen to a8 to f8 and attacking this pawn. And there's no more defenders that he can use to defend the pawn, so I'm just going to basically win the pawn. Uh, now, of course, there's another move here that the computer suggests. Um, not queen a8, and I did look at this, I did analyze this, but this move c5, which is what the computer says is the best, is uh, very difficult to play because you're, I'm kind of opening up all my, like, all the squares around my king, but the point is that this bishop here, getting on this diagonal is very, very, very good, and it stops, and, and white actually doesn't really have any big threats. And the computer gives this sample line of, let's say, bishop f8, rook d2, bishop c6. And I'm kind of threatening to go after this checkmate. So queen d3, trying to get in this way, play rook d7, trade. And after bishop c4 and bishop d5 going here, bishop d1, I can just take this pawn back. And apparently this is pretty good for black also. I'm just up a piece still. And it's a nice position, but I think what I played is also pretty decent. Queen a8, going to f8. And here he played another weird move, queen g1. So his queen has been making a lot of weird maneuvers right now, which is very funny also. I mean, this position is just very funny. This bishop is blocked, literally blocked in by all his pawns. But at least I'm up a bishop. So I decided to take. And he played this move rook d6, which opens up his queen. That was his idea of playing queen g1. Opens up the queen on this diagonal to check my king. Um, there's also, if you would have taken, if you would have taken the bishop after the checks, the checks will eventually run out and I'll just be up too much material. So that was another possibility. But after rook d6, I played queen f5 check. And after he moves the king, now this is actually a big threat, and there's only two moves that can that deal with this threat. One of them, which I saw, was queen takes c5, removing the defender of the rook. And after queen a7, king takes d6, queen b8, skewering my king and queen. I have to keep a hold of the queen, so I have to play king d5. And after bishop b3, my king doesn't really have many places to go because... I have to keep defending the queen, and after bishop c2, I can only go back. But luckily, I always have this move rook c4, which I saw, and I'm just up too much material and I'm winning. So I did see that variation, but I decided that 
and I don't need to go for that. I can play the other move, which they're both about the same value and they're, they're both just as good. I played rook f2, interfering with the queen's di diagonal. He played queen g8, not really threatening anything, but this could be dangerous. But of course, I have my own threats to deal with. Uh, I played queen takes c5, uh, removing the defender of the rook, and also attacking this pawn, which would be checkmating. So he plays rook d3. And I, now I play this move queen f4, which, by the way, I could have, I should have played last move. Queen f4 just getting inside, and there's almost no way to stop checkmate. But I saw it la uh, later, and here is when he he resigned slash lost on time. I'm not sure. He, I'm not sure. I, mean, I think he lost on time, and then he resigned. But it's pretty much lost. Uh, there's no way to stop queen c1 checkmating, so he has to play queen g3, and after e5 and. I'm just going to be up a piece and a bunch of pawns. So it's pretty much losing for him. So this is how I won my game here. And this is how I crossed 2200 USCF and I got my national master title. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. And I can uh, go over other tournaments games. And I can do more recaps. Uh, I do notice that recap videos are missing on YouTube of people going over their own classical games and their own thoughts. I think those kinds of recaps are very instructive and I hope, um, I hope to put some of that instructional material out there for more people to see. So if you'd like to see more of my games of how I got this high rating, I can go over some of my other games from the journey or I can... Um, or I have some other things planned out for the future. But anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and have a nice day.